SpaceX will hit a big milestone this year on its road to Mars if all goes according to plan. The company is developing a giant rocket known as Starship to help make Mars colonization and a variety of other ambitious exploration feats possible. First publicly unveiled in September of 2006, the fully reusable next generation rocket that eventually became today's stainless steel Starship was tentatively scheduled to begin orbital flight testing in 2020. But about two years after the first announcement, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk unexpectedly sacrificed years of development work on Starship structures when he decided to replace the rocket's carbon fiber composite airframe with stainless steel. Years later, it's still hard to say if that decision was the right one, but Starship development has been surprisingly unperturbed by such an immense last-second design change. Starship prototypes have taken just a handful of low-altitude hops off Earth's surface to date, but the vehicle is on target to earn its orbital wings in the relatively near future. I feel, at this point, highly confident that we'll get to orbit this year. That's what Elon Musk said during the February Starship update. However, up to now, this schedule has had some major changes. In early August, Musk said that SpaceX's first successful orbital Starship launch will probably occur between 1 and 12 months from now. The famously over-optimistic CEO's latest Starship schedule estimate is uncharacteristically cautious, hedged and open-ended while simultaneously setting some reasonable expectations about the likelihood of success. Despite the CEO always saying that he believes that Starship's first orbital launch attempt could happen before the end of this year, his August 2nd tweet less optimistically implies that he wouldn't be surprised if it takes SpaceX a year and multiple attempts to achieve Starship's first successful orbital launch. It's even possible to interpret his tweet as a warning that Starship's first orbital launch, while more likely to be successful, could be up to 12 months away. All of this is most likely the result of major changes in Starship's launch plans. An updated document submitted by SpaceX to the U.S. Federal Communications Commission has revealed details about the company's plan for the first Starship booster catch attempt. The document follows a different batch submitted by SpaceX in June of 2021, when the company detailed its plans for the Starship's first orbital launch debut as background while requesting permission from the FCC to use Starlink dishes for an in-flight telemetry. A month earlier, a different request focused on more standard telemetry antennas had already revealed that even if the mission went perfectly, Starship would not fully reach orbit on its first attempt at spaceflight. It also confirmed that SpaceX had no intention of recovering the upper stage or super heavy booster assigned to Starship's launch debut, a sort of implicit acknowledgement that success was, then, not expected on the first try. Twelve months later, SpaceX has submitted an updated overview of Starship's orbital launch debut in a new request for permission to use multiple Starlink dishes on both stages. While most of the document is the same, a few particular details have changed about Super Heavy's role in the mission. This time around, SpaceX says that the Super Heavy booster will separate, perform a partial return, and land in the Gulf of Mexico, or return to Starbase and be caught by the launch tower. Prior to this document, SpaceX's best case plans for the first Super Heavy booster to launch never strayed from a controlled splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, potentially demonstrating that it would be safe to attempt booster recovery on the next launch, all but guaranteeing that the first booster would be lost at sea. A year later, SpaceX appears to be a bit more confident and wants to leave itself the option to attempt to recover the first Super Heavy booster that launches. However, the company has dramatically complicated the process of testing early Super Heavy and Starship recovery by fully removing traditional and predictable landing legs and designing its latest prototypes such that the only way they can be recovered in one piece is with a giant mechanized launch tower nicknamed Mechazilla. For a booster or starship catch, the rocket will approach the tower, enter the gap between the splayed arms, hover in place while the arms close around it, and eventually come to rest on hard points that appear to offer about as much surface area as a coffee table. Based on a simulation of the process shown by Elon Musk, calling it a catch is a misnomer, as the arms will mainly move in one dimension, which is open and close, and can't actually grab the rocket in any real sense. As built and shown, they are closer to a tiny fixed landing platform capable of minor last-second positional adjustments. 
Eventually, the chopsticks could have a small amount of time off of post-recovery processing, removing the need for a crane or the same arms to attach to a landed booster or ship. They could also shave off the dry mass required for landing legs, though all interplanetary ships will still need legs. By all appearances, the current recovery mechanisms on the arms and the landing hardpoints on ships and boosters mean that a catch could fail if either stage is more than a foot or two from a perfect bullseye or rotated a few degrees in the wrong direction. With the method SpaceX has devised, even the tiniest error could easily end with a massive pressurized partially fueled rocket destroying the chopsticks and plummeting a few hundred feet to the ground, guaranteeing an explosion that could damage surrounding infrastructure or start fires that might. In the event of larger anomalies during a landing attempt, Starship or Super Heavy could accidentally impact the launch tower, damaging or even outright destroying the skyscraper-sized structure. Ultimately, the immense risk posed by any catch attempt means that unless SpaceX has miraculously gotten the design of everything involved nearly perfect on its first try, the company will have to be extraordinarily cautious and expend a large number of ships and boosters to avoid rendering its only Starship launch tower unusable. But enough about that, let's talk about another change, which is that SpaceX may attempt to deploy Starlink satellites during Starship's debut orbital flight test. Starship SN24 features a horizontal, rectangular cargo door from where satellites can be deployed to orbit which suggests SpaceX plans to test the deployment mechanism. SpaceX founder Elon Musk compared Starship's payload deployment mechanism to a Pez candy dispenser. The company also shared a video of how Starlink satellites will be deployed. However, most likely, SpaceX will use replicas instead of fully functional Starlink satellites during Starship's first ever orbital flight attempt. Regardless, deploying satellites still would help engineers collect data on how their design functions in orbit in order to speed up the spacecraft's development and manufacture an improved Starship for the next flight test. Of course, SpaceX likely knows these changes and Starship Super Heavy would likely need to be in excellent health to perform perfectly during the ascent and boost back portions of its launch debut. That's why they delayed the launch date over and over again. Ultimately, Starship's first orbital launch could end up being even more of a spectacle than it's already guaranteed to be. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.